All right, here is your review for your test on factoring polynomials. Now, in each one of these, your first step always should be look for is there a GCF you can pull out of everything. And here in number one, they each have an x, so I should start by pulling out an x. When I do that, I'm left with 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. This x now is just going to stay out there. I'm going to worry about it later at the end. Your next step now, I have a trinomial with a number out in front. So what I should say is, what are factors of whatever 3 times 8 is? 3 times 8 gives you 24. Factors of 24 that subtract to give you 10. Well, those numbers are going to be 12 and 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a 12x now and a 2x. Now, to make it so that it's a negative 10, it needs to be a negative 12x and a positive 2x. That's the only way those can add back up to be negative 10. Everything else stays the exact same, including that x out in front. What I now look to do is I need to take uh, each of these pairs and see what I can factor out of each of them. So I'm keeping my x out in front of everything. Now from this pair here, I can pull out a 3 from the numbers and I can pull out an x uh, for the variables. When I do that, I still have an x left there and I still have a minus 4 left for this guy. For this part here, I can't pull out any x's, however I can pull out a 2 and I'm left with x minus 4. And that's a good thing because what I should see here is I should have what I have <coughs> uh, left behind should be one of my factors and they should be the exact same thing. What I pulled out, the 3x minus or 3x plus 2 should be my second factor and then I still have this x out in front. So your final answer is all three of those terms. And number two, you're already broken down into your sets, into your uh, four things. So I can already break them down into my twos. So when I do that, I can pull out of this one nothing from the number, but I can pull out an x squared. When I do that, I'm left behind a 3x, and I've taken away everything, so it's just minus 1. Now, in this one, I can pull out a 3, but what I should look for here, I have a minus in front of the x, so I should take out a minus 3. When I do that, that leaves me with a, or it shouldn't be a, I'm sorry, not a uh, 3 I can pull out. I should pull out a 4 from those, because then I'm left behind with a 3x, and I'm left behind here, 4 divided by negative 4 gives me negative 1. And again, I have <coughs> this pair. 3x minus 1 is what was left behind, so that's a factor. And x squared minus 4 is my other factor. Now, something to look out for. Anytime you have a factor that has an x squared in it, you should be looking for, is it a difference of squares? What that means is, can I take the square root of both numbers in that pair? Yes, I can. And when I do, I have an x. Uh, what I should do is I should have two sets of parentheses, an x in each, because x times x gives you x squared. And then 2 times 2 gives you 4. That's how I have 2 in each. And that means what I need for my signs is one positive, one negative. It's called a difference of squares. And then this 3x minus 1 stays just as it was before. In number 3, kind of like number 1, first step again, can I pull anything out? Well, I can take a 3 out of everything, so let's do that first. It leaves me with, uh, should be a 2x squared plus x minus 3. So again, I have a trinomial. I need to turn it into a, uh, a 4 polynomial, a uh, 4 term polynomial. So 2 times 3 is 6. What are factors of 6 that subtract to give you 1? Well, those numbers are, <coughs> excuse me, just 2 and 3. So I'm going to break this down into having a 3x and a 2x. It doesn't matter which order you put them in, but you need to have a positive 3 and a negative 2 when you do this. Keep everything else with it, and you still have a 3 out in front of everything. Okay? Again, I'm going to look at my two individual sets here, 2x squared and plus 3x, and then minus 2x minus 3. When I do that here, uh, my 3 staying in front. What I'm going to take out of this first guy, nothing for the numbers, but I can pull out an x. That leaves me with 2x plus 3 when I uh, take that out. I have a negative in front of the x, so I should take out something that's negative, but I can't take anything out. So I'm going to say I take out a negative 1, which means now just my signs change on the inside. 2x plus 3 is what's left. Again, my 2x plus 3 is a common uh, what was left behind, which is what I want, so that's one factor. What I pulled out, my x minus 1 is the other factor, and I still have this 3 out in front of everything, so 3 times those two factors. In number 4, when you have a trinomial, you have two options here. Uh, first thing I can say is, same thing, where factors of 35 that add to 12, that would be 5x and 7x. So I can split them up like I've done on all the other ones. Now I have this four-term polynomial. I can break it down. This first set I can pull out an x, leaving me x plus 5. The second set I can pull out a 7, which is, leaves me with an x plus 5. So my factors are x plus 7 or x plus 5. 
Now, the shortcut here, if it's a trinomial like this, and you have a 1 out in front, what I can do is I can just say, like we said, back in the 35 that add to 12, all I have to do is put two sets of parentheses with an x in each. My factors were 7 and 5. And how do I make 7 and 5 add up to be positive 12? That only happens when both are positive. So this little shortcut can work, but only if that initial coefficient is a 1. All right, let's move on to our next set. Number 5, I can do the same thing with that little shortcut. Back to the 32 that add to 12. Those are going to be 8 and 4. So I have an x in each, an 8 and 1, and a 4 in the other. And the only way I can get 8 and 4 to get to negative 12 is if they are both negative. So x minus 8, x minus 4 as my answer. In number 6, again, we're already with a... Uh, with a four-turn polynomial, so I'm in good shape. I just need to factor out each pair when I group them. So I can't factor out a number, but I can not factor out an x squared. I'm left behind with 5x from the first term and 2 from the second term. I can't, <coughs> uh, I need to factor out a negative, I should say, because a negative in front here. I'm going to factor out a negative 7, leaving me with 5x plus 2, which is, again, exactly what I wanted. Because now I have this pair here, so I have 5x plus 2 for my one term. And what I pulled out was x squared minus 7, so that's my other term. Now, again, I need to look. Is this term right here, is it a difference of squares? Well, x squared definitely is a square, but 7 is not a perfect square. So we cannot simplify this anymore. In number 7, same idea. Factors of 6 that subtract to 5, those numbers are 3 and 2. So I have an x in each, a 3 in one, and a 2 in the other. <coughs> I'm sorry, though. That is definitely not the correct answer here. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's try this again. What I have here is factors of 6 that subtract to 5. Those numbers would not be 3 and 2. Those numbers would be 6 and 1. See what happens when you start going too quickly. So you have an x in each, a 6 and 1, and a 1 in the other. The only way that I can get 6 and 1 to get me to a negative 5 is that the 6 is negative, and the 1 is positive. So again, if you need to, check it back out by foiling. You can do this on any of them. When I foil, right there would give me x squared. Right here would give me a plus x. Right here would give me a negative 6x. And my last would give me a minus 6. So that's x squared minus 5x minus 6. Really, you should be checking on pretty much every one of these to make sure you've gotten the right answer. Number 8. These are this is probably the toughest one to try to see here because we have factors here of 84 that need to add to 8. Well, you could go right down the list and figure out what they are. Well, I can do 1 times 84 definitely isn't going to help. 2 times 42, which isn't going to help. 3 times 28, that subtracts to be 25, so still not there yet. The next one will be 4 times 21, which still uh, is not quite there yet. So the next one I would try would be uh, 6 times 14. Well, 14 minus 6 gives you the 8 that I need, so that's where we want to be. So I want to go and split this up into a 14x and a 6x, and the only way that I can make this so it's a positive 8 is if it's positive 14 and negative 6. Rewrite everything else along with it, and now I have my, my uh, four terms. I can now factor again by grouping. So what I'll do when I group that I can factor out a 7 and an x from these first pair, leaving behind a 3x, and then this will leave me behind a 2. Again, a negative in front here, so I need to take out a negative. I can only take out a negative 2. This leaves me with, again, 3x plus 2, which is good. Remember, I want to make sure these two things that are left behind are the exact same. So 3x plus 2 is left there, and what I pulled out was 7x minus 2. That's my other term. I'm in good shape. All right, continuing forward. Number nine here, kind of like the ones we did before. I can just read it because it's coefficient's one. Read it from right to left. Factors of 12 that subtract to give you one um, are going to be three and four. So here's my two sets of parentheses with an x in each. I need to have <coughs> negative four, or I'm sorry, negative one in the answer. So that means I have a negative and a positive. Or if it helps when the sign in the back is negative, we always said the sign in front goes with the bigger number, which is exactly what happened there. Continuing forward, again, factoring by grouping with a four-term polynomial, I can take out an x squared for the first guy, leaving with an x minus 3. And then for this one, I can take out, in this group, just a 4. And I'll leave it with an x minus 3, which is good. So 
Again, x minus 3 is what I have left, so that's one factor. And x squared plus 4 is my other factor. Now, what a lot of you might look to do, you'll see this right here and ask, is it a difference of squares? Well, a lot of you might go and say that this should be x minus 2 and x plus 2 because both x squared and 2 are squares. However, this is not a difference of squares, this is a sum. Anytime it's a sum, we can't factor it anymore. You're absolutely done. So this right here is your final answer. <clears throat> Number 11, we need to try to get this into a 4 term. So I need to say what are factors of 9 that subtract to give you 8? Well, that's going to be 9 and 1, one of the easier ones to do. So I need a 9x squared and a 1x squared. And the only way I can get it to be negative 8 is if it's a negative 9 and a positive 1. Now make sure whatever your variable is here in the middle, that's what it should stay when you bring it down to the bottom. Everything else stays the exact same. I now factor by grouping. In my first group, I can pull out x squared, which leaves me x squared minus 9. And in the second group, I can just pull out a positive 1, which leaves me again with x squared minus 9. So I should have x squared minus 9 as my 1, and x squared plus 1 as my other. Now just like we said here, the x squared plus 1 can't be factored because it's a plus. But the x squared minus 9 can be factored more, because 9 is a perfect square. Its square root is 3. So I have x minus 3, and x plus 3 is what that breaks down to. And I have to keep the x squared plus 1 as my final factor. In number 12, uh, this should be 8x squared minus 52x minus 28. Again, what I should look for always first is can I factor something out? I'm going to be able to factor out a 4 out of this entire thing. Now, if you didn't factor out a 4, you still could have gone through, multiplied 8 by 28, and found what factors of that number subtract to 52. That's a pretty darn big number, though. So it's easier to try to factor something out first. When I do so and divide all of them out, I'm left with 2x squared minus 13x minus 7. This is a lot easier now because I have factors of 14 when I multiply 2 times 7 that subtract the 13. Well, those numbers are going to be 14x and 1x. And the only way I can get negative 13x is if it's a negative 14 and a positive 1. Everything else stays the same, and I'm going to keep that 4 out in front of everything else. Now again, like before, I factor by grouping. There's my one group, there's my other group. In the first group, I can pull out a 2 and an x, leaving behind an x minus 7. And I can't pull out anything here, so I'm going to say I pull out a 1 and leave it as x minus 7. Keep the 4 in front of everything. My 4 stays in my first factor. My second factor then will be what I had left behind, x minus 7. And my last factor is what was <coughs> pulled out of each, 2x plus 1. And again, the order doesn't matter in all of these. They can be in any order you want as long as you have them all. Home stretch, last four. Number 13 is just a difference of squares. x to the fourth has a perfect square of x squared, and 81 has a perfect square of 9. So I'm going to get two sets of parentheses with those in them, one that's positive and one that's negative. I should look at each of these and see if I can break them down anymore. This one's positive, so I definitely can't. But this one, 9, is also a perfect square in itself. So I can break that down into two sets of parentheses. The square root of x squared is x. Square root of 9 is 3. One's negative, one's positive. And then this guy stayed just as he was because he could not get broken down anymore. So that's where you're finished for that one. 14, another one. When you already have 4, it makes things a lot easier. We're already in good shape. I can pull out of my first guy. I can pull out a 6 and an x squared, that leaves me behind with an x minus 5. In the second group, I can't pull out anything, so but I need to pull out a negative because it's a negative in front of the x. And that means I switch the signs to make it positive x minus 5. So I'm left with factors of 6x squared minus 1 and positive x minus 5. Again, squared, is this a difference of squares? We need to check that. Well, 1 definitely is a square. x squared is definitely a square. However, I need to look at that coefficient in front as well. 6 is not a, does not have a perfect square, so it does not work any further. You're done right at that point. Number 15, 6 times 3 equals 18. What are factors of 18 that subtract to give you 7? Those numbers are going to be 9 and 2. So this becomes a 9x and a 2x. The only way it works is if it's a minus 9 and a plus 2. Everything else, we keep the exact same, 
And now I need to again group them and factor here by grouping. So there's group one, there's group two. In the first group, I can pull out a three, and I can also pull out an x. Leaves you with two x and minus three for the second part. And the second one here, well, nothing I can pull out from this guy. So just positive one leaves you two x minus three behind. So your final factors, two x minus three for what was pulled, uh, what was left behind, three x plus one for what was pulled out. And the last set, 8 times 3 equals 24. What are factors of 24 that subtract to give you 10? Well, just like one of the first ones we did, we're going to have a 12, and we're going to have a 2. Keep the same coefficient, or the same uh, variable, I mean, 12x squared. The only way it becomes positive 10 if it, is if it's positive 12 and minus 2. Everything else stays the exact same. And now I, again, like I've been doing a lot of, factor by grouping. I can pull out a excuse me, a 4 and an x squared for the first guy. When I do that, I'm left behind with 2x squared plus 3. And I can't pull out anything here. However, I do have a negative in front of the uh, x squared. So I want to pull out a negative number, a negative 1. That leaves behind a 2x squared plus 3. So this should be, as my writing starts to go downhill, a negative 1. So I'm left with 4x squared minus 1 for what I pulled out, 2x squared plus 3 for what was left behind, and now I need to look again. Is this here a difference of squares? Well, yes, because 4 is a square, uh, has a perfect square root, and so does 1. So I can break this down. I can make it now 2x minus 1 and 2x plus 1, because 2x times 2x gives you 4x squared, 1 times 1 gives you 1. And then my uh, last part here, it cannot possibly be a difference of squares because it's just a sum. So remember, always check your GCF first, see if you can pull something out. And at the end, make sure you always check to see if you can break down your factors any further. Good luck. Have fun.